all right guys now the most important part of installation is uh, the central instance let's go ahead uh, load the provisioning manager and click on SAP inst all right and we're gonna go and install business suite release one MSSQL and we're going to install the application server. Oh, not Java. Oops. ABAP release one for MSSQL server. SAP systems application server. Now we have two options distributed or standard system. We're going to go with the standard system. Distributed is if you have database on one machine and the application server on the other machine. So where we install the application server and the database server on different machines but we're going to go with the standard because it's both on the same server we're going to go press next okay and we're going to click custom installation you can click uh, typical if you want and uh, it's going to log us off just to install a token i will continue by itself once it logs in Okay, you'll load up by itself, you don't have to do anything. Okay, I'm going to open a notepad for some exercise, some, some of the notes. I'm going to keep this as a password, I'm going to copy this. Okay, I'm going to go with EH7 as the uh, as a SID we want to install it in C drive and the domain name this is very important if you want to set it up so for that to happen we need to go into Windows and set up the domain name uh, I'm going to use a particular domain name system32 drivers etc and host files so you can see the 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 way to get here and I'm going to create a shortcut I'm going to drop I'm going to drop the shortcut on the desktop okay oops close this okay and now I'm going to oops oh man I did it for the wrong one I you have to go in here C drive windows to put it into this desktop here okay open a command prompt one one sixteen is our IP address right and so we open the host file open a notepad and add a line 192.168.1.16 tab I'm going to put my uh, thing as 4 VM oops um, we have to find the host name of this interesting host name is ECC EHP 7 ECC EHP 7 dot 4 VM dot com okay so that is our host name I'm gonna save it and I'm gonna put 4vm.com over here press next and that is our domain it's the easiest way to do it than changing it once this SAP installation is done again um, this is this is going to be challenging sometimes it accepts the uh, NetWeaver 7.42 kernel sometimes it doesn't it doesn't accept it so this is our updated kernel I'm going to try and see if it accepts it. Sometimes it does. See, sometimes uh, at this point it's accepting it. 
but uh, when you install certain components like CRM and SCM it doesn't accept it now this is where we need to install a ton of passwords so I'm going to copy and paste this just to keep it safe okay we're going to install on a local domain okay uh, we don't have Active Directory or any of that stuff which is going to install on a simple local domain and again uh, all my passwords are my master passwords just confirm it by and press next and you can keep track of all of this stuff EH7 admin is a basis user uh, these are all the service users that SAP creates for various tasks there's nothing you need to worry about and they're all uh, found using the SID SU01 and that is our host for the database we're going to keep it as that It's just letting me know stuff that I already know. Okay, now it's going to give you two errors. One is the operating system error, one is the swap size. Swap size we can change. So let's go in and set a proper swap size. I forgot about the swap size. So we're going to go into system and advanced properties, performance, adjust for best performance, and in the advanced menu. Oh, yeah, advanced menu. I'm going to change. I'm going to make a custom size 49999 to 59999. Again, it's you can set it at whatever you want. Press OK. Press OK. Press OK again. It'll ask if you want to restart, I think. Maybe not. Okay, so swap size is uh, fixed. The um, Windows 8.1 is not a supported system. We need a server system. We don't want to repeat the checks. Press next. Okay, again, it's going to ask you the same thing. We're going to install on the local domain. Press next. Again, all the passwords. They'll ask you about maybe about 10 users of uh, SAP admin. ADM is a global administrator. Uh, most probably we won't be using that for basis task we'll be using the eh7 administrator now we're going to go into the installation exports browse again go into our media folder eh7 and that is our okay i'm going to copy this control a control c press that and ask you for imports too and you just go to replace the one with two or you can go and browse and do it again but I'm oh yeah I have to do it again because it's not it's saying it's different so now I try to do it the easy way but it didn't accept it so I'm gonna go here those two folders I need to change again password for EH7 MSSQL user um, really there is just to confirm that it is using the same password just control Control C, Control V, and we're going to go for a small system. Press Next, and I like to organize my 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 uh, my folders just to make it like neat and clean instead of having folders running over. But again, they say it's a performance hit. If you do that, we're using SSD, so there's really no performance. EH7, it just when when you're administering it, it makes this makes a lot easier to administer so I'm going to copy this and I'm going to replace each of the options here with EH7 so it's all in a subfolder this is a, just a personal preference you don't have to do this you can just go ahead with the installation but if you have 10 uh, SIDs on one machine which is possible you have to uh, do, do uh, stuff like this uh, everything else we're going to keep uh, but this is a way uh, decluster tables we're not installing HANA on this so we're not going to decluster the table we're going to leave it exactly the way it is so keep it do not decluster also declustering increases the thing I'm going to increase this to six because we have a lot of resources parallel jobs again if you don't if you don't have the resources don't do this 
it's just uh, going to cause you problems again my uh, instance is zero zero and the application server zero one I'm going to keep it as that um, message port you don't need any of that. these are all default default again uh, ICM we're going to leave it exactly the same the password which is usually the master password uh, this is a good idea if you want to register the SLT or not uh, in our future videos we will be doing the SLT but for this video we're not going to do SLT because there's no plan to install solution manager in this machine so in our video where their solution manager we will be installing an SLT so I'm going to skip the SLT for now okay so the secure storage keys are this if you want to keep uh, keep track of this I'm just going to copy and paste into my notepad here okay and I'm going to press OK all right so all this stuff is going to be installed and I'm okay with that press next it's just confirming all the archives that are. we don't want a diagnostic agent again because there is no solution manager there's no use for a diagnostic agent this is going to run just as a separate VM and for training purpose so no need for diagnostic agent I'm going to skip that and uh, we are at the final stage because we did a, a, a custom un, uh, installation a lot of these uh, parameters show up that doesn't usually show up like this how many parallel jobs you doesn't show up on a typical if you select a typical in the first uh, page we select a custom that's why so we don't need to revise anything so I'm just going to go ahead and begin the SAP installation by pressing next and as you can see it, it is it is begun and we'll keep checking back this will take a few hours to install SAP and if any errors come again I will fix the errors on live screen so these are errors that you might encounter as well so if there's no errors well and good but if there are errors we will do errors together we'll fix the errors together okay so don't be afraid if there are errors always sometimes errors come we have to fix it nothing is perfect all right so hopefully there are no errors but if there are errors we'll fix it uh, together on screen so now I'm gonna pause it and wait and come check back every 30 minutes or something okay so uh, about maybe 10 minutes have passed and we're in the import stage uh, of ABAP this is the most uh, time-consuming part it's importing the ABAP tables um, there are six running one is completed There's 157 going so we'll come back and check on it periodically hopefully everything goes without a hitch okay sorry about that guys I couldn't keep track in between but uh, it looks like the ABAP instance installed uh, perfectly as you can see execution of ABAP has been successful and uh, we'll just you can press detail to see if there is any any details here and we can go and analyze the uh, the log files to make sure that everything was uh, imported and there was no errors by going into the uh, installation directory in program files install standard ABAP and uh, you can see the log files here you can see all all of the work that was done everything looks successful another log file to look is the import monitor import monitor and uh, we're gonna go and just take a quick look at this is the ABAP imports I was done and uh, it will tell you if the 
if there's any errors it'll come here this is where the errors is usually if the console says that it's a failed zero 164 packages running six you can go all the way down to see if everything was loaded successfully but looks like everything was loaded successfully running 80 running six 77 and then sometimes it won't uh, tell you on the on the console but it will your you can see over here that it is uh, it has been run successfully see failed zero running five let's go all the way down failed zero running four running one waiting one successfully completed every everything has been successfully completed input monitor is stopped so um, it's a perfect installation and uh, we will we will come back in the next uh, in the next video and we will configure the GUI and uh, begin our, our process of post installation